Pardon the glare in the background. It's very bright back here. Oh, time for yum boxes. And today it says, where is it? Where people learned to listen to their hearts. I don't know about you. That looks like a French gentleman. In a bray. It's not how it's pronounced at all. It's not even close. Hi, welcome back to my ridiculous videos. I don't know why you're here, but I'm glad you're here. Let's be friends. And let's go to Les Français together. <laughs> Actually made an effort today. Effort happened. It looked good. Good for me. How about you? How's your day going? Let's eat some stuff. In France. There's a mouse on this package. Should we trust it? Welcome! We've got one question. Is there any country in the world more obsessed with love than France? And a follow-up to that. Oh, y'all went with France because Valentine's Day, didn't you? Why have you done this? Stop it. Uh, is it possible to go to uh, France and not fall in love? I'm probably. I'm pretty sure people do it every year. France loves le in all its puzzling forms. You can see what passion looks like from the masterpieces of Monet and Degas, or read it in the pages of romance novels like Madame Bovary. You can even hear what love sounds like, thanks to Frederick Bachman. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Frenchman. I don't know why I said Frederick. Fred Frenchman René... Uh, Lenek, maybe? Who invented the stethoscope in 1816. But we're most concerned with falling in love with some brand new yums. We found the most tantalizing truffles engaged... Why did it, I can't read again. My English do, do bad. En enchanting aged cheeses and irresistible sea salty caramels. And so now we're waiting for our answer to the question, is it possible to go to France and not fall in love? We think not. Perhaps if I didn't speak in a ridiculous tone that makes no sense, we wouldn't be having this reading problem. So we got chips, 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 and a box. And a mini roll. What's happening? Let's eat mini roll, because why not? It's just basic shiny package. I'm guessing raspberry flavored, judging by the raspberry. Mini roll. What an inspiring name, friends. Not to say that I'm sure we don't have plenty of uninspiringly named things here. Raspberry mini roll cake roll with raspberry filling. Saw that coming because it was squishy and it's called a roll and there's a raspberry on it. It's all very self-explanatory. France practically invented dessert. No, really, the word dessert comes from the French désivir, I think, meaning to clear the table. And rest assured, when it comes to France's world-renowned desserts, there is never any problem clearing the table. These delectable raspberry swirl cakes are first-hand proof. Instantly, you'll get a fragrant whiff of real French raspberries. I bet they're frickin' delicious. Take a bite and taste the rich, ah uh -huh, pitch-perfect ratio of fluffy, soft cake to sweet, syrupy raspberry jam. One thing's for certain, dessert has dessert has to be one of France's best inventions. Why can't I talk? Maybe it's not that I can't talk. I can talk just fine. Maybe it's that I can't read. I am I have reading problems. It's very sad. That smells very raspberry. So if you like raspberries, this smells like it would be for you. It's very strong raspberry scent. Mm, very nice soft cake. It makes me think of like kind of like sponge cake or angel food cake. And that's pretty much it. It's raspberry and cake. I mean, works for me. I think it tastes very good. Oh. Should we go from raspberry to... I'm pretty sure they're vinegar chips. I mean, it says vinaigre. I'm, English and French aren't that far apart that I don't know what that means. These are Sibylla Chips Sevier Vinaigre. I'm sorry, France. I can't not be absolutely ridiculous with your language. Feel free to make fun of English anytime. I'm sure you already do, so good times will be eats with each other. Bordeaux is famous for its vineyards. Paris is famous for its high-end restaurants. But what about the city of Orleans? I'm assuming that's pronounced correctly. I might be wrong. There's a little too over the E. Lying directly between the two. Hint. Look at these chips. Yep, it's famous for vinegar. Between the 13th and 17th centuries, countless barrels of wine would go sour on its way from Bordeaux to Paris. Rather than take the loss, savvy merchants in Orleans sold the spoiled wine as vinegar. Hence the name vinegar from the French uh, vinaigre. Oh, vinaigre? Aigre? Meaning sour wine? Yeah. The merchant's decision turned out to be anything but sour. The uh, vinegar industry exploded. Today, 
the vinegar is used across the friends from everything to cleaning supplies to vinaigrettes to perfectly crunchy delightfully tangy potato chips like these and you've got to admit vinegar chips sound better than sour wine chips that's true the word sour is not very inspiring in terms of most foods unless it's purposeful which technically this would still be purposeful but a lot of sour is, is associated with things like I don't know candy and whatnot this is a very sad bag of chips I'm not gonna lie I mean, look, every bag of chips is very sad in that you get the chips and then you only get X amount. Again, we're about half, only it's almost a little bit more because I got this one sticking up, which is why this is taller on this side. But even the chips in here are kind of like... <laughs> broken and tiny and... Let's find a big one, maybe, if you're lucky. Uh, you're kind of big. That's why I'm always... Sh if you're ever wondering, I do this a lot. First of all, it's just for funsies, and second of all, I'm looking for bigger chips instead of all the little sad little bits. So we'll go with this guy. Definitely smells like potatoes and vinegar. I'll be honest, I thought it would be way stronger. I've had stronger vinegar chips. I don't have a problem with vinegar chips. I also can't pronounce vinegar properly while I'm eating chips, apparently. So maybe I don't talk so well. A lot of little ones. Any folded ones? Folded chips are the best. I don't know why that is true, but it is. I don't know who says otherwise is probably wrong. Oh, here we go. Hey! A big folded one. So it's just vinegar chips. We have some of these here. Only I don't think they're just vinegar. I feel like what? vinegar and sea salt or something? I mean, I think these still have salt in them. So it's kind of redundant, I guess, maybe. But alright. Vinegar chips. If you enjoy vinegar and chips and etc. And you go to France, get yourself some little vinegar chips. Nah. It's chips! Do you like how I go from looking amazing to I've been cleaning house all day and went for a walk, took the yuts out? He was very good on his walk. He didn't bark at anybody. Good job. These are au fromage. I can't remember if that has to do with cheese or milk. Du Jura. But that was like a little milk jug. And this is obviously some cheese, so I'm guessing these are going to be... These are uh, original. Well, I don't know, it has the word original and then unique, so I don't know if it's original and unique, or one or the other. <laughs> Confused. Uh, where'd they go? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? These aren't civil. These are Brett's au fromage du Jura. Floral. Ah, uh, didn't expect that. Cheese flavored potato chips. The floral was throwing me off. This is going to be more interesting than just cheese. Did you know the average French person eats 60 pounds of cheese per year? It sounds like a lot, but they have an incredible number of different varieties to try. 1,600 to be exact. For this chip, we'll just focus on one variety. Uh, mm. Comte? A sweet floral cheese from the... Um... Franche... How is it? Is it Franche or is it Franche? I don't know. It's C... It's like Fra It's like French, only with an A, and then C-H-E at the end. I don't know. Comte Prince, province in Eastern France. Sorry, France. I don't know any of your language. Doing my best. I'm sorry. To make the cheese, every cow is treated to two full acres of pastures to roam plus a diet of 100% natural food. Their fresh milk is immediately rushed to the production site where it is crafted into cheese wheels and then matured for at least four months. The result? An incredibly distinctive, delicious cheese. One bite of these chips and you just might find yourself wishing for 60 pounds worth. You know, cows that get to meander around in nice pastures with delicious grass always make the best milk, cheese, butter, what have you. And once again, just like any other bag, it's half of the bag, but whatever. Again, I can't complain. We do that here, too. Let's find a nice big one to, to nosh. Wait, here we go. Hello, hello, hello? Ah, the curl chip. It smells like cheese. But not like, oh, not, not cheddar. Uh, it's kind of distinctive. Hard to describe. It's like, it's more of a, like a mellow... Well, I mean, like kind of like like a mellow whitish cheese. Ow. Very 
very chill. Very slight cheese flavor. Here's the ingredients. Flavored with potatoes. Mm -hmm. These are thick ones too. They got some nice crunch to them. Powdered melted Jura cheese. Produced exclusively with the Comte cheese. I like that. It's nice. That they're like, no, no, no. This is the cheese we use. We say it. We're using it from this place. End of story. I'm trying to think of like what cheese it reminds me of. I'm not doing too good. Probably because I've never had this kind of cheese before. It does make for a nice snack after going for a walk, though. Just some chips and crunch. Is there another curl one here? Hello? Are the cheese? No? Okay. Okay, well, I mean, hey. If you ever get the chance to have some nice cheese, potato chips, by all means, go for it. Because, uh, it's pretty good. Since I'm still hungry, let's have more cheese because that's a mouse, this is cheese, and these are things that seem to be filled with cheese. Tube! I'm my head. Filled with cheese. Spill tube, uh, hmm? Huh? Green Noto fromage. So I guess cheese is fromage because both of these last things had fromage in their name and they're both cheese. We have shocking news! Are you sitting down? Yes. Okay, here goes. In France, people don't really snack. Gasp! We know, we know. Sounds crazy, right? Well, I mean, they do in some fashion because they're literally all snacks. But okay. But let's be clear. The French still enjoy munching on chips, crisps, and crackers. They just saved them for a pre-dinner course called the aper aperitif. During this starter course, French folks gather for a con casual conversation, a glass of wine, and a savory snack designed to whet appetites for the meal to come. The cheesy, um... Green notaire, maybe? Oh, the French word for nibble in your box is made specifically for the occasion. Feel free to do as the French do and save the snack for right before dinner. Just be extra careful not to spoil the main course. No! I'll not be doing that today. I'll be eating it right now, this very moment. Dinner is still a couple of hours away. Also, I realized it didn't explain what this really was at all. It just was like, this is. is this is. This, eat it before dinner! But I mean, it does say cheese flavored tube snacks, so, you know. Doesn't smell as cheesy as the last one. Kinda. Kinda sound like bugles. They're just. They're not really tuby, they're like more like flattened tubes. I mean, what, you know. They would be hollow. Are any of them? Well, you can't call these tubes, they're flat. Alright, well, whatever. So I don't have any idea what kind of cheese this is, because it didn't explain anything. This just says cheese flavored popcorn snack. Cheese flavor. Absolutely does not explain what kind of cheese, it just says cheese. Can't get much more generic than that. Mmm, cheese. Kinda tastes like generic cheese too, I guess, really. It doesn't taste like cheddar, or mozzarella, or American, or pepper jack. Just kind of got some of that slight cheese twang, I guess. Mm. All right. The other chips are better though. These are kind of mm, meh. Not too into the generic cheese flavor. Kind of wish I knew what kind of cheese is supposed to be. But none of this really says, or if it does, it says it in French. I don't know French, so. But oh well. I still want to eat a snack, so. Because I'm hungry. I didn't have one. I was busy. So I'll enjoy eating my non tubes generic cheese snack. Who's hungry? Oh, wait. Oh, there it is. <laughs> like, I didn't think my, bring, bring my thing. Bring my thing, thing, but ding. There's a very fancy box. Very with a very fancy looking lady on it. It kind of makes me think of the circus, only that's not quite. I think it's mostly because, pardon the glare. Here we go. Uh, I think it's mostly because of the. Um, I don't know, just the style, I guess. Really, 
Makes me think of the ammo cracker box. I'm about to just start to open it. 1888. It's old. Don't stuff. The box. These are Les Sables de la Mer. I don't know what the E with the dudes is over it. Uh, Poulard. French is also French is also tricky because there are a lot of words that have letters that just aren't pronounced, which I don't understand in general. What are you doing? Mostly because it's like, why write it on there if it's not you? I don't know. I, we do that in English too. It just doesn't seem like to be as prevalent. I don't know. Anywho, this isn't the language talk. This is eat things and t talk about them. Watch out! The main ingredient in this famous French shortbread is sand, but this is delicious sand. Uh, sables are. At, I want to pronounce it in in. I was gonna say Mexican. That's not right. Uh, Spanish. Although technically it's Latin. Anyway, I want to pronounce it in Spanish too because I've had four years of Spanish in my life. What is happening down here? Oh, someone is such a baby. Hello, baby. The M baby have been sitting up with my little feet, been demanding attention, want all the things. As usual. No, like, I have to use that hand. To... You're right. Old man? Got that old man cough? Lumpy? Anywho, let us continue with reading. Do you want to read with us? We're going to read now. Uh, uh, where am I? They're century-old cookies made by rubbing cold butter into flour and sugar to form tiny particles of dough. Given the dough's... Oh, it's moving. I can't read it. Given the dough's striking resemblance to sand, these fine golden uh, breadcrumbs came to be called a French word for sand. Uh, so yes, these delectable cookies are made with sand. Uh, but we're taking... The very buttery and very edible kind, not the kind you find on the beaches of the French Riviera. Woo! Doggo! Lickiest boy! Can you sit and be patient, please? We're going to have cookies that don't involve you. You've already had your snack. Where, do you want to go somewhere? I don't know. What is happening? I'm just trying to eat food, and this weird creature is just weird creaturing his way into everything. Hi there. How are you doing? The people can't see my beautiful face. I don't really care. Oh, there's so there's six cookies in a box. Please don't fall down. Six cookies in a box. I will eat one at some point in time. I will eat a cookie. Uh. There's so much crumbles. Hey, hey, this is, where are you going? Stop it. Smells like a basic cookie. Oh, it's got 1888 written on this. I, you know, they didn't tell me anything about the. Did they mention the date at all? Is it important? No? It doesn't. I feel like they should. This seems important. That's a long time ago. Okay. Hi there. You're crumbly. I mean, I've had shortbread before. It was, was kind of not great, honestly. Shortbread in my mind has always been kind of eh. This is even more eh. Why are you looking? I don't know what's happening. It's so confusing. You're a very confusing dog. Mom, oh, hmm. I don't know if it's because it's thinner, so it got it, it got cooked a little bit more. It's a little bit more golden on the edges. It's a little bit crunchier. Like maybe it was left in the oven just not a lot, but just a hair too long. And it doesn't quite work. I, don't, mm, eh. I need something. Shortbread's always been very boring to me. I've never been super impressed with shortbread. So, hmm, nah. Take it or leave it. Maybe I need some milk. I don't know. What do you think? Milk? Yes, no? Let's move on to something that sounds way more exciting. Truffles bar. Even though it feels like multiple truffles and not a bar. But, uh, you know, linguistics are crazy. Truffles bar by Mathez. Cocoa dusted truffles. Oh, yes. You love the chocolate because you got into it that one time. And I had to take her to the vet. It was very expensive. You're a punk. He's a cheeky boy. He's a sneaky little bugger. Anyway, uh, cocoa dusted truffles. According to legend, this young came about completely by accident. Those are the best kind of food accidents. Sometimes this is poisonous. That's a problem. In the 1920s, confectioner um, 
Auguste Escoffier was making a pastry cream when he accidentally poured hot cream into a bowl of chocolate instead of a bowl of sugar and eggs. Rather than bidding the melty chocolate adieu, he began experimenting. He quickly realized the chocolate paste, called ganache, could be molded, so he rolled it into balls. But he couldn't just leave the gooey balls like that, so he coated them in cocoa powder. The result? A delicious chocolate ball that looked a, looked a whole lot like Francis Mushroom Truffles. Ha! Ah, hence the name. Cool. I've always wondered about that. We can't think of a more delicious accident, except maybe devouring all four of these decadent cocoa truffles before anyone else can. Sign me up! Truffleage! Look at how happy they are, by the way. These guys are having a good old time. They're just like, running along, enjoying life, loving it, about to eat all their faces. I hope they don't mind too much. Uh huh. Now, yeah, it's more stuff that you can't have. Littlest boy. Hello? Come out and be a part of things. Oh, so it's kind of- I expected it to be a little bit rounder. It's already- I can already feel it melting under my thumb. It totally did. Ta -da! So, uh, yeah, it's basically a truffle. It's already immediately melting, so that's how you know the chocolate's good. Even though it is covered in cocoa powder, but, you know, warmth versus that, so... That's nice. Got that nice, very smooth, it's a nice dark chocolate too. Very good dark chocolate. I appreciate a good dark chocolate. I like the the cocoa powder on the outside. Because cocoa powder is not really sweetened in any way. It's just like straight kind of just chocolate, you know? Basically. Adds a nice little hint of its own. I don't really want to use the word bitter. I don't really know if I have a better word for it, but its own thing. You know, if you've ever had cocoa powder, then you know. Mm. Those are good. I kind of want to savor those. I don't know. I might eat them all at once. Uh, I might not. I probably will. I'm probably going to eat all of them. And like, after this video is over, I'm just going to eat all of them. But I have to deal with the shortbread first. So. Get yourself some uh, truffles if you can, but don't give them to little doggos. You don't deserve truffles. You do deserve truffles. I, that's a lie. You deserve truffles, but not the actual kind. But you've already had snacks, so I don't know why you're acting depressed. Okay. <laughs> it's time for the yum bag. The yum bag, for those of you that don't know, is usually full of hard candies. I meant to catch that I didn't... But now you know that they're hard candies. Or softer candies, or just candies in general. You know, I'm opening up this booklet to read about it, except I don't even know what's in here yet. Sharp objects! That's not the smartest thing to do. Just rolling out candies. In my duskies. So I've got three caramely things. And then three other things, two of which are different colors. So I'm assuming different flavors. So, oh, this actually, it is initially you think it's hard, but then you kind of squish it and it does have some give. So these are tetes. The E's get a little wah over it. And then we have lots of more, more wants. So more things that I'm. Brulees, tropical peach tea, and cola. I've never understood the appeal for cola flavored things. Just bleh, no, thank you. Choose with sour filling. Oh. Okay, well, consider yourself warned. This super sour sweet is about to blow your mind. No, we're not being dramatic. This candy's name literally translates to burnt heads. Oh. Kind of makes me think of um, whatever the American version is. You know what I'm talking about if you're from here. Uh, don't worry, they won't actually set your head on fire, but their extreme sour filling is much more intense than the sour candies you're probably used to. We're looking at you, Sour Patch Kids. No, 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 no. Warheads. That's what they're called. They're called warheads, and they will ruin your day. Depending. Uh, and with tangy flavors like peach tea, tropical fruit, and zingy cola, they provide an explosively mouth-watering experience. Pop one in your mouth and decide for yourself. Are we being dramatic, or do these sour candies live up to their mind-blowing name? I don't know. I don't usually eat sour candies. It's not really my thing. Is there a way to know what's what? I don't know, I'm assuming maybe this is peach? Ugh, peach tea? I don't like tea, though. Well, I got two of these orangey ones, and one of these ones. Oh wait, no, this is... Oh, I think this is cola flavor. Blech. Let's see if I can find... Oh no, this is tropical. Yay! Tropical flavor. 
Oh, I, I crunched it and it went <laughs> squished out. That was weird. It's all you got. It's sour, but. I mean, I'm gonna get over it. It does make me twitch a little bit. Ooh. But, no more than I just like. Um, just taking like raw lemon and just went. Oh. I would argue that that's the equivalent. It's kind of a lot all at once, and I think that's where the intensity comes from. But, once you get all that down and out of your mouth. Meh. Because the rest of the candy is sweet. The baby is being a baby. None of this is good for you. Just FYI. Mm. So chewy, but you know. Meh. Should we eat the cola one? I guess we should. Because we have two flavors, so. Such a baby. Baby. It's your little bottle. Little old man. Alright. Cold the time. And more sourness. You can't have cola candy. Careful. Please. There's really no way to get. You just like. It doesn't take much. You just crunch down on it. Goo. Oh, it does taste like cola. Yeah. I oh, where's my other one? It's tropical. This is overall just not good to me. Ugh. Oh, I don't like the cola in the shower. Here they are. No. I'm not going to disappear at all. Two of those in a row, I will say. It's a bit much. That it's a lot of sour. Cause it's just like like I said, if you just bit into a lemon and just went to town. <laughs> Making my mouth water a lot. But it, it is strong. It's stronger when you do two in a row. It doesn't help if you don't like the flavor you're already eating too. Cause just imagine dunking a bunch of lemon into your cola drink. Uh, pass. But again, once you get all the sour out of there, and just let the chew, chew's doable. Because chew's kind of sweet, so. Do you want to learn something? The word bonbon is actually the French word for candy, literally translating to good good. Didn't know that. Now these, we have just, they just look like caramels. There's three of them. They look tasty. These are caramels con fleur de sel. Salted butter caramels. Salted caramel is a classic, right? Considering its popularity, you might think so, but the flavor is less than 50 years old. It was only in 1977 that French confectioner Henri Leroux set out to make a new candy using the famous sea salted butter from the Brittany region. After three months of experimentation, he debuted the salted butter caramel, and it was an instant hit. By 1980, it was voted the country's best candy. By 2000, high-end American restaurants caught wind of the flavor. And by 2008, it had gone totally mainstream with both haagen and Starbucks debuting salted caramel products. With this bonbon, bon, you'll taste the salted caramel that started it all. And find out for yourself why this French flavor is here to stay. Ah, okay. Yeah, it had never really occurred to me that salted caramel, like, hadn't really been, a th like, a thing. Kind of always assumed it was just, like, around, but not so mainstream. It's kind of funny, because my favorite drink that I get at the coffee shop is actually a salted caramel drink. The funny part is, there's not actually really any salted caramel. There's actually no caramel involved at all. <coughs> Starbucks. <coughs> it's toffee flavor, and then mocha, then the espresso and milk. There's no caramel involved whatsoever. There's caramel drizzled on top, and then a sprinkle of like sugared salt, and that's it. <coughs> but whatever. All right, so now we're back into the realm of sweet the caramel. Yeah. Mm. Now this is a nice caramel. I've had some in the past where they're not this chewy. 
Mwah. This one you gotta work out though. These taste nice. For the original salted caramel. Mm hmm. This is good. The creature was getting antsy. I'm glad I have two more of these because these are actually really. These are, I think, honestly, I think these are my favorite things out of the box. And normally I'm not that into caramel. But these are just really nice. It's very smooth. It's not overly sugary like some caramels. You eat them and you're like, oh, too a little sugar high. But these are mm, on it. So that's everything in the box. Um, because we only got the regular in this box and not the fancy one, I didn't get honey mustard. Or I'm sorry, mustard and honey. Well, same thing. Uh, potato chips, uh, apple and salted butter caramel biscuits, cookies. Just syrup cookies. And mango Sichuan pepper chocolate, which I don't know how I feel about that, depending upon the heat. If it, if it's a good flavorful heat, cool. If it's just I'm just here to burn the back of your throat for no reason, pass. But didn't eat any of those, so it's relevant. So here's the clue to next month's box. Next month, an expedition is in store. Down the Rio, we'll search from shore to shore. Not for critters, for something even more rare. Chilies, passion fruit, and yums beyond compare. So obviously, we're going down the river, Rio. I'm assuming. Unless they don't mean that one specifically. But, because it's not capitalized. But given that there's palm trees and chili peppers and sort of coconuts, but the innards are green, it sounds a lot like we're going to be going towards uh, somewhere in the South America region. Which, no disrespect, but we've been there before. And so unless it's somewhere that we haven't been in South America, eh. Although we did get something from Uruguay before, so who knows? It'll be a surprise in the end. It is always is, because I don't go looking, even though they actually tell you on the Facebook page. So I stay away from that. Because I want to be surprised. I want to guess, even though I always say I'm going to look stuff up. I don't. Sometimes I do. Usually I don't, because I forget. Also, I don't care. I like the surprise. Close to me. So thanks for joining me on my journey of eating candies and sour things and having my eye twitch when I eat the sour things and tiny dogs, etc, etc. And hopefully I'll see you next month when I eat more things and hopefully by the time this video comes out it hasn't already been a month and I've actually done some editing. I guess we'll find out. Ah!